Okay, now let's start to understand this kinematics and we'll start with something very simple and trivial, as simple as distance. So let's see. Distance, uh, suppose a person starts running from point A, reaches to point B and then comes back to a point C. The distance between A and B, let's assume to be 5 kilometer. The distance between B and C, let's assume that to be 4 kilometer. The distance between A and C would turn out to be 1 kilometer. The math is pretty basic, no prizes for that. Now, distance. If somebody asks, what is the distance between, what was the distance traveled by this, this person? And distance traveled is actually the path distance, the path traveled by this person. That was actually 5 plus 4 kilometer. The, so, distance traveled by this person is 9 kilometer, 5 plus 4. Now, I am beginning with this and through this illustration, we will actually understand and appreciate as to why at all we are going to study whatever we are going to study. Fine? So, please bear for 5 minutes and understand, pay attention and try and understand what is going to happen in next, the upcoming lectures from now. So, distance from A, distance travelled by this person from A to B and back to C is 9 km. That's fine. Displacement. Displacement as you must be knowing, displacement is defined as a straight line distance between initial point and final point because many situation there arises there and practically where we are concerned only with the initial and final position not bothering much about what goes in between them. So there is a need for defining such a quantity. So, displacement is defined between as the distance, straight line distance between initial and final position. Initial position is set to be A, final position has been declared as C. Straight line distance between A and C is 1 kilometer. But displacement is a vector quantity and if we don't know by now, you should know from now that vector quantity carries direction along with the magnitude. Distance is a scalar quantity, so magnitude is good enough for the describing distance. The magnitude, numerical value and the unit. So, distance of 9 km is a complete description of the distance. But displacement being a vector quantity, there should also be direction appended to the magnitude, then only it gives a complete picture. Displacement has been towards east. If, if we follow this convention as this to be north, south, east and west, then point C is lying towards east of A. So, we can say that displacement is 1 kilometer eastward. That would be fine. Now, let us move one step ahead and see what is the speed. Speed is the measure of actually how fast a body is moving. Speed is defined as distance upon time. Here, Distance is 9 km, time, let's see, let's assume the time taken to be 1 hour. The time, total time of journey by this person, let's assume that to be 1 hour. Then speed of his would be distance, which is 9 km, upon time taken, which is, I'm saying you 1 hour. So, speed can be declared as 9 km per hour. Fine. That is good enough, but let us make a habit to always use the SI unit of every physical quantity that we deal with. So, 9 km can be conveniently written as 9000 meter and 1 hour could be written as 60 into 60 second. That will turn out to be 2.5 meter per second. That is fine. Displacement similarly, if you will calculate displacement, uh, no, velocity similarly. If you calculate, velocity is defined as displacement upon time. It is defined parallelly to speed. As you say, speed is distance upon time. Velocity is displacement upon time. And you would understand that distance is a scalar quantity. So, speed 
is a scalar quantity because time is a scalar quantity. Here, displacement is a vector quantity. It carries a direction along with it. So when you put displacement here, you will put one kilometer eastward upon whatever the time taken is. So velocity will co also come out to be a vector quantity. So velocity would be one kilometer upon one hour eastward. Right? If you take it the SI units, it will be 0 0.278 meter per second eastward. Fine. This is speed and velocity. That's good enough. You have learned it in junior classes. You have known the formulas and so long. And that's easy. I mean, that's easy as easy as candy for you to calculate this. That's fine. Now, suppose if I ask you, was this speed of 2.5 meter per second actually the same at each and every point throughout his journey of the van? Of course, no. This 2.5 meter per second is actually an average speed of in his total distance of 9 kilometer is the average speed of 2.5 meter per second. But when we go into finding out the actual speed at each and every point of the distance, then we move into the real kinematics that we are going to study. Now these simple situations you have studied before. Maybe you have also done it part by part, breaking the journey into different sections and then finding the average velocity of each section and so on and so forth. But you have not ventured out up till now to actually find the speed at each and every point of the journey. Like if, if I want to calculate what is the speed at, what was the speed when the person traveled exact 5 kilometer or exact 5.5 kilometer or exact 2.6 kilometer likewise and similarly what was his velocity when the displacement was so and so and so and so and so. So now from here we will uh, actually begin what we are going to study. Now, I'll start very slowly and very smoothly and you also be very attentive while you listen to everything that is being said. 